And it's the breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Time for us to go through the papers. We call it of the press. Tunde Kuala Wale joins us this morning uh, via phone. Tunde, it's good to have you join us. Meanwhile, Tunde is a legal practitioner. Thanks for having me. All right, then. Uh, let's start off with the Punch newspaper. The Punch says, new Naira racketeering. EFCC to raid Lagos, Kaduna, Patakot currency hawkers. CBN bars multiple debit card withdrawals, threatens stiffer sanctions. Mephili meets reps, orders banks to accept all notes after deadline. I'm sure that, you know, answers <laughs> the question, uh, the, the conversation that we have. The central bank stops all notes pay payout. Commotion persists at ATM points. I'm sure that's the reason why we, we, we don't have, uh, you know, money, really. NPC, ADAX, N 24 year old uh, production sharing contract. I know, I understand. Reps dump 22.7 trillion naira loan request, okay, 1 trillion naira borrowing. Fuel scarcity threatens election, national security, INEC, CDS is quoted to say. Uh, that's also a statement by, you know, the umpire. Mahmoud Yakubu uh, has been concerned about, you know, the impact of petrol scarcity on the uh, elections. One killed as tanker crushes three Lagos tricycles. And you find protests as Equator Madu wife appear in UK court. And Lagos governorship candidate orders boycott Obi's Yola rally. How 100 bandits ambushed and killed seven NSCDC personnel. This is according to the director, and that's the much we can take this morning on the punch. Very quickly on the nation, uh, we have the following headlines. In Mayfield, banks to blame uh, for scarcity of new Nara notes. CBN chief uh, to Nigerians, you won't lose your old notes. Deadline extension likely, he says. Banks to blame. Uh, for scarcity of new notes. Uh, Tinubu promises prosperity in Cross River and to Anambra erosion. NNPCL investing 2.6 trillion naira on 70 roads. Absence of sick child stalls a Kure Madu's trial. NNPCL, CDS uh, threaten action over fuel scarcity. As some headlines on the front page of the nation. Well, we quickly turn our attention to uh, the leadership newspaper this morning. Odinga technology can be used to rig elections, and that's contrary to what you know a lot of us have believed. <laughs> you know, we, we think that uh, with the deployment of technology, especially with smart card readers, the beavers now, uh, we're going to have a, a smooth time. But that's you know contrary to uh, the popular opinion. Credibility of election depends on INEC courts. Uh, the vice president is quoted to say. 2023 will be the best in the nation's history. Lawan is also saying, delivering credible polls, challenge of the moment, uh, Nda Isaiah is quoted to say, will tackle drug menace frontally. Marwa declares, uh, these are some of the writers you find this morning underneath the bold caption, INEC worries over worsening fuel crisis ahead of polls. Don't disenfranchise uh, over 3 million students, Obi tells INEC. Don't disenfranchise over 3 million students, Obi tells INEC. And there's a lot of conversations surrounding whether or not the school should be in session, especially after, you know, a strike that's lasted eight months. Now redesign, no Nigerian will lose money, MFLE is quoted to say, and reps approve PMB's one trillion naira loan deferred 22.7 trillion naira request. Uh, talking about President Muhammad Buhari, that's what you find right there. Petrol scarcity, military please warn marketers. Uh, that's the much we can take on the leadership. Uh, let's move on from the leadership to Daily Trust very quickly. Uh, January Vow, a uh, wiki led G5, fails to name presidential candidate. Otom Makinde Pazu Gwai in a fix, Abia governor. Lobbies to replace late anointed candidate. 
Abia Gavran lobbies to replace late anointed candidate. Uh, we are sure of reconciliation at Tiku campaign. They have run out of steam. Carry uh, some pictures of uh, projects uh, commissioned uh, uh, by uh, President Buhari in Kano. We can see on the front page uh, of uh, Daily Trust. We take a quick look at the Guardian newspaper. Uh, the Guardian says, cash quizzes or cash quiz intensifies uh, stalls business transaction. And uh, that's the Guardian newspaper this morning. PDP condemns Tunibu's alleged threat to Governor uh, Udomi Manuel. Ekwere Madu, wife in court as trial continues today. And again, you find you have missed deadline. Name your presidential candidate. Peter Side turns wiki. Uh, you know, that, that, that's the much we could take this morning on the Guardian newspaper. All right. Um, on that note, we'll bring in uh, today call only. Today, I think it's not a bad way to start uh, to look at um, the, the headline on the front page of uh, the Daily Trust. It's also uh, on the front page of uh, Guardian uh, talking about the deadline for the G5 governors. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, it's February 1 and uh, we don't know who they're supporting yet. It's becoming a bit stale. Uh, what do you think? Uh, they're shouting and dancing and crying. Uh, it's getting out of fashion. Would you agree with that? Uh, honestly speaking, I think the reality has done on weekend and the rest of the G5 uh, uh, governors that um, it is going to be full hardy for them to adopt any of the presidential candidates outside outside the candidates of the political parties that they belong to. Because if they do this, chances are the possibility is very high that it will affect most of them in their respective states with regard to the other candidates that they I mean that are contested on the platform of the PDP. Say for example Shayima Kide in your state. So you mark in the belongs to the PDP. Imagine if you now adopted the APC presidential candidate or the Labour Party presidential candidate. What would he be telling the people of your state with regards to his own candidature, with regards to the senatorial candidate of the PDP, with regards to the House of Rep and then to the Federal Assembly? So in a way, they are in a quagmire, they are in a dilemma. They are in a fix. Any mistake of adopting any presidential candidate outside that of the PDP is likely to lead to a very, very uh, breakdown or what a uh, kind of uh, uh, serious disaster for all those different governments in their respective uh, states. And you could see that there is beginning to be a turnaround. Atiku has gone to wicked state to campaign. And Wiki has made facilities and logistics available to him to be able to do his campaign. Even though he has not openly adopted a sequel. The indication for me is that Wiki is beginning to realize that he cannot do without a sequel. This is for the rest of the G5 government. So what I suspect they might be doing is to so, so support a sequel uh, covertly without actually coming out openly to say so. And you are in line, you and I do know that our politics and our politicians, they behave like a cultist. Most of the things that they do is done on the ground and at night. They are never transparent in the actions and activities. So they have all turned all the G5 governors have turned themselves to be clowns and puppets who really haven't demonstrated that they are taught critically and very widely with regard to the with regard to the road to, to the road to position that they have embarked upon. These are these the positions, these are these the steps, these are these the outcries and kind woes with regard to Atiku and his presidency as the PDP flag bearer. We'd like to share your thoughts on uh, the uh, headline on the Punch newspaper, Reps dumps 22.7 trillion loan and 
okay is one trillion naira borrowing that's for ways and means uh, what are your thoughts especially when you know we're looking at 77 trillion naira as you know debt it is a tragedy of monumental proportion in which borrowing of money has now become a statecraft i haven't seen any creativity i have not seen any ingenuity on the part of this government to be able to raise or increase the internally generated revenue and also to plug all the loopholes uh, that is attendant into the finances of, uh, of the nation. Nigeria has become like a basket that this government takes to the river to fetch water. And you know when you take bucket, I mean when you take a basket to the river to fetch water, you get nothing at the end of the day. I think at the end of the day, when reckoning is going to be made, when the Nigerian people or when the next government is going to be asking for accountability, the National Assembly and the respective State of Assembly will have a case to answer as the guys the country went bankrupt under them. This is the first time in the history of our nation that every request to borrow money that is taken to the National Assembly and taken to the respective State of Assembly are never critically scrutinized and never critically challenged. The executive arm of government is never made to, 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 to demonstrate why they want to borrow that money and how they repay, how they intend to repay back. And that is why the nation is sitting now on a mountain of debt in all the areas of our ramification. So that any government that comes into power come 2023 is most likely to be managing debt in the next eight years that such a government might be in power. And the value of the Naira. So long as we continue to accumulate this debt all over the time and all over the place and over this long duration of time, the value of the Naira will continue to dwindle. And very soon, among nations will stop borrowing us money. And then, like I said before, the Naira is likely to become like the Zimbabwe dollar. So that when you want to buy the Maggi, or like the Ghanaian Fedi, so that when you want to buy tomato, you will have to take millions to the market. To pay for tomato, to pay for the man who sells grocery. I think by now the National Assembly should have applied a break, especially when this government is handing over come May 2023. Should have applied a break in monetary borrowing. And also don't forget when you read the pages of the newspaper today, it's been said now that the NMTC Limited is not the no the one financing the road per uh, construction project that we have all over the country. The implication of that is also very, very great. In the sense that every money that the NLPC makes from petroleum sales either locally or internationally is supposed to be put in the national, uh, 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 in the corpus of the nation and shared among all the three tiers of government. So if the NLPC now begins to share whatever money it realizes from sales of crude oil, and from the petroleum products in Italy and all that, you are in a way denying the states and the local government their own fair share of uh, the resources of the nation that should rightly belong to them in terms of federal allocation and in terms of what should go into the corpus of the nation. As so, so, um, to the I'd like to ask, I'd like to ask, we are in trouble. Tunde Kolawale, I'd like to ask, we understand that the approval of the request uh, uh, is based on the fact that, I mean, there's need for one trillion naira for additional ways and means for the implementation of the 2022 Supplementary Appropriation Act as passed by the National Assembly. And my question will be, don't we have other means of generating revenue? I mean, like if you have to solve a problem now, uh, rather than, you know, go a borrowing, then you can decide to, you know, look the other way, the other pocket, and get some money? There are, there are. Do you know that when they talk about ways and means, what it simply means is that the Central Bank of Nigeria will print that uh, trillion naira note and make it available for the government to, to, to spend. They just couch it in a very... A uh, palatable uh, phrase, ways and means. It simply means that the CBN and then uh, the, the maintenance corporation will reprint that money and make it available to the government. And I've said it as it has number, 
And you can challenge, you can do your cross checking. When this country budget say 100 naira, I mean, hypothetically, as budgets in the year, you will not believe it all by my own record and the little research that I've done. It is only about 30% of that 100 naira that is budgeted that is actually spent on what the money is meant for. 30% of the rest money goes into individual pockets, into private pockets, into politicians' pockets, and into useless as a expenditure. A white elephant project, signature project, like a flyovers and a, a stadiums and a renovation of offices and buying of cars for wives and children of, of, a, of a local government and governor. So I, I, we can make do with less than 50% of what we budget for annually. The rest just goes down the drain. I have said this also, that the cost of contract in this part of the world is the highest. And sometimes you will not blame the contractor. When they are what contract, the contractor who has gone to bank to borrow money will not be paid on time. And then the interest that he, he has signed for with the bank, we keep accumulating. And you and I do know that interest rate in this part of the world is compact, but not less than 35%. Whereas in the rest of the world, interest rates are never more than 2 to 2.5%. But here in Nigeria, it's not 5%. So when the contractor is not paid on time, and he's done a little bit of job, he will apply to government again for a review of the contract, and then the contract will be reviewed a hundred or ten or twenty times, and then the government will have to pay more, and the country begins to sink into, into debt. So we must get our act right. Just like during the Alaji Dakande era, Alaji Dakande never embarked on any project that he has not actually received the money the way they need the money, with which he, all, he would have designed the ways and means. He will get the money to finance those projects before he's embarked on it. But since, we, since they return it, since the beginning of the APC and the advent of the Buhari Association, before they embark on projects, before they think about where to raise money to finance the project, it is only in Nigeria that is done. That is good economics. I don't know of any country that does that kind of a thing. And like I said, the cost of culture in this country is the, is, is the highest in the world. And what is all these things that we use the culture for? When you are constructing a road, you probably need iron road. You need granite. You need sand. You need cement. The only thing that is important out of all these things is the machinery and equipment that you deploy to the road. And then the iron road. And some of these iron roads are even made in the country. So why would the cost of, why would the cost of constructing roads in Nigeria be that high? I mean, be that high? Every construction to, to in Nigeria wale, today uh, we're is running out of time. in billions. Tunde, I'd like you to speak to this uh, very important work, right. counting down to the elections, 24 more days before right. the presidential elections. And afterwards, we're looking at the elections in March, the 11th to be precise. But, you know, ahead of these elections, uh, the Prime Minister of Kenya, Raleigh Odinga, has warned Nigerians to be vigilant in the use of technology in the electoral process as it could be used to manipulate, uh, you know, the process and steal the people's mandate what are your thoughts, especially when, over time, there's been argument and there's been, you know, expression as to the use of technology. A lot of people are advocating, I mean, e-voting as a solution to curbing malpractice and what have you. Now, with the introduction of the beavers, that has also triggered the, uh, you know, the trust and uh, the rate of which Nigerians are hoping to have a transparent election. I'd like you to speak to this. When I think Ozinga Ozinga is speaking from experience, you will not, I mean, you will remember that the man just confessed uh, uh, the Kenya presidential election, which is lost. I think he has confessed now about three times and have lost all the election. When his father was also alive, his father also confessed the Kenyan election more than five or more than three times or thereabouts, and also didn't win that election. But the Kenyan experience is peculiar. Peculiar in the sense that uh, the tribe which Ozinga Ozinga belongs to is a minority tribe in uh, Kenya compared to what uh, the Kenyatas and the rest of them uh, belong to. So that has made it difficult for people like Ozinga Ozinga and the people of the tribe to be able to win election. If probably they do the kind of thing that we do in Nigeria in terms of uh, rotation, in terms of this gentlemanly agreement that um, presidency and key posts will come from different parts of the country, the family will be better off. Now, with regard to the technology and all that, 
Zinga is merely reflecting the truth. No technology is a fool. You and I will know that the hackers have a way of breaking into your computer system. They break into the currency reparking system. They can generate figures uh, uh, using um, different devices. I have received on so many occasions, received first and last on my telephone uh, without anybody paying money to my account. I have also received text messages and uh, lurid pictures that are sent to me in which somebody's phone number, who is not aware, who never gave his content, another person will use that person's phone number to send messages and pictures into my own phone uh, uh, number without the person's content or without the person knowing about it. So if this is happening all over the world, and taking cognizance of what happened in Osho recently, uh, the Osho election, in which despite the, the, the technology that was defined and all that, there was still massive overvoting in some part of uh, Osho state. It tells you that, look, human beings are the, the, the most crucial when it comes to having a fair, uh, free and fair election. If those who man the co-host, if the electoral officers and those who participate in the election are not interested in a free and fair election, no matter what technology you deploy and all that, they will still find ways and means to boycott or to sidetrack or to manipulate this technology to get whatever results that they want. The challenge with the Nigerian election is lack of integrity. Is this do or die affair for the Nigerian politicians to win election at all costs? And then the lack of integrity on the part of the security men. It is difficult to lead elections if the security men don't cooperate with the politicians, if they don't cooperate with the INEC officials. For too many times and know that, like, um, like the former deputy senate president of a place memory at the at the say that when they want to contest a measure in Nigeria, they make money available to the security men, they make money available to the INEC officials, and then they also compromise uh, uh, those who are called so called uh, election observers. And also they also took take hold of the thugs and the hoodlum in all the different places, uh, court boys, the hoodlums in the under the bridges and the motorbikes and what have you, and deploy them during the election process. To be able to manipulate and so, so in other words, the that there's still the a tendency so that... These are the challenges. I mean, so in other words, you're saying that there's still a tendency that these elections can, you know, be rigged, even with the deployment of the rigged. beavers. Oh, sure, oh, sure. The elections can still be rigged, so long as they, they, they participate in the, 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 the actors in this election, I like security officials, the politicians themselves, if they are not interested in the free and fair election, you and I will never get a free and fair election in this country. And I say this and I start to be challenged. Since we already came to government and the APC came to government, we have never had a free and fair election in this country. Who and take the record? Okay, that, that, that's a very, uh, you know, uh, strong one that you have put out there. But as we cost it down... Yeah, it uh, is. Th th it is, and that is the reason they do some of the things they do to people. Oh. So how then is the credibility of the elections dependent on the courts and INEC? We, we probably might understand INEC in this case, but, you know, speaking to the credibility of the elections depending on the courts and INEC, I'd like you to, you know, react to those thoughts. It's from the vice president. It is, it is a tragedy that, uh, that it is our court that now, that now decides who wins and who loses an election. Nigeria is probably the only country in which to have that kind of high number of politicians, that kind of number of uh, political parties going to determine who wins and who loses an election uh, in the court and what happens. The court, like I continue to say, to be of last resort, and I have said it, this resort to the court system to determine who wins the election have been compromising the integrity of our court process and corrupting the court and polluting it. The, the, the court is, or is a sanctuary of justice, a temple of justice. And when you begin to circulate the temple of justice, like the Nigerian politicians have been circulating it, then you have challenges in our hands. You will recollect that so many judges have been sacked for being, for receiving gratifications or for being compromised while sitting on the election of the tribunal. Lawyers have also been jailed for giving bribes or uh, being banned for a certain number of years 
for compromising the integrity of your lectures and all that. And of course, even a professor in the university has been indicted and I think sent to prison. A professor who was sent to go and be an election monitor. And we thought that if we begin to send professors to some of these electoral uh, places and all that, we are likely to have a free and fair election. But no and you, some of them, one of them has even been seen one time to run away with the election uh, results and was hiding somewhere to write the whole electoral the election results and all that when he was caught. So that's can't see that every system comes across uh, all the cameras of our life. It is the electorate now that can decide, that can determine. All right. If uh, that I, I, I like you. I, I like us to just talk about this quickly. Yes, Tunde Kolawale, let's quickly look at this on the leadership and then, right. you know, after this time out, we will call it a wrap right here. Uh, it's to right. the consent of the presidential candidate of uh, the Labour Party, Peter Obi, speaking to INEC, asking that uh, don't disenfranchise over 3 million students. Apparently, that question was being put out to him as to his thoughts about 3.5 million students who might not be uh, taking part in these elections because uh, you know what happened, right? So, but is there anything that can be done, really, constitutionally? Well, that is a uh, uh, serious matter. You know that some of these students, they probably would have uh, registered in their respective schools uh, to vote. Some of them they have registered in their villages uh, and towns when they ask people when they on strike. And most times, too, when uh, we are going to be having elections and all that, some of these institutions are also shut down. They are giving a short holiday for them to be able to go back to their villages for security purposes. And maybe for those of them who might have registered their ability to be able to vote and all that. Else. All these things have to do with the planning. In some other countries of the world, there is a calendar for a whole nation in terms of education, in terms of the lecture, in terms of PVC collection, and in terms of all the activities that take place in, in a country. But we don't have such calendar. Most of our activities are done on the ad hoc basis. We never take cognizance of what and where certain persons will be, for example, during the elections and what have you. Take, for example, the PBC collection too. I should think, and that is my, 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 my own belief, that people should have up to 24 hours before the election to be able to collect their PCC and all that. And some of these PCC too, since there is a traffic, some of them have a traffic on them. It is so too difficult for us to say, so despite some of these um, PDs to their respective addresses or to the homes of those who have registered for them. Let me give you an example. A friend of mine had a child in the U.S. and all that, and after the, the, the wife had a child and all that, and came back to Nigeria, you will not believe that the American government, the American state, sent the international passport, the American international passport of that child to the parents there in Nigeria, the courier this. The embassy delivered it to the home of, uh, of uh, the parents of this child here in Nigeria. And that was the child that was born in the U.S. Talk less of a PVP that is done in Nigeria that we are able to distribute to people very close to us. If we have mobilized the community leader, the violence, the upper, and what have you, if we are even assigned the responsibility of distributing some of these PVP to lawyers, to accountants, to NGOs and what have you, we would have gotten a better result. And most of them would have done that thing free of charge. But deliberately, certain persons are holding the PCP because it is a weapon on the day of the election to either disenfranchise the opponent or to make sure that you win the election at all costs. All right, then today we, we have to go. Thank you so much for being part of the show this morning. We appreciate you and we look forward to sharing your thoughts as we proceed in 2023. Thanks for having me. Thanks. We need to pray a lot for Nigeria. Uh, and then, lot as Nigeria. much as we pray, we, we need to also do the work. Uh, we need to do what yeah, we should do. Right. Prayer without work and goes to nothing. Well, faith, they say, without work. So, yes, it's important that, you know, we pay attention to what we should do. As much as, uh, uh, you know, doing the right thing at every sphere mm -hmm. that we find ourselves. Thank you once again. And uh, we appreciate you. We wish you a very beautiful uh, February. I also, I always appreciate your zone of voice. All right, then.
<laughs> thank you. Well, that's the size of a package. Uh, thank you very much for your time. We have more ahead for you on the breakfast and uh, mercy, I'm sure. Um, we can't wait to have a first conversation. Yes, we will definitely uh, be looking at our first conversation. The uh, latest ranking for Nigeria, uh, talking about Transparency International. I hope I got that well, but you can call it, you know, IT right there. All right, we'll be back. Please stay with us.